Hi guys, today I am going to review Cadilla Healthcare Limited, one of the largest uh, pharmaceutical company in India. So as an intro and uh, its milestones, Cadilla Healthcare Limited, which is also known as Cytos Cadilla, is an Indian multinational pharmaceutical company, which is headquartered at uh, Ahmedabad, Gujarat, India. It was founded by Raman Bhai Patel in 1952. Uh, along with his business partner Indravardhan Indra Modi. So over four decades uh, this pharmaceutical company has established as a premier pharmaceutical company in, uh, in India uh, with established uh, uh, established presence worldwide having uh, 30 manufacturing plants worldwide. So in 1995, this Patel and Modi family split and Modi's family's share was moved into a new company called Cadilla Pharmaceutical Limited. Still it is running. And uh, there is Health Cadilla Healthcare Limited, which is Patel family's a holding company. So this group's, uh, group was restructured and Cadilla Healthcare was uh, uh, rebranded under the aegis of uh, Cydus Group. And from 1995, it had a turnover of 250 crores. And from that 250 crores, it has grown significantly over years to uh, have a turnover of uh, 14,253 crores in financial year 2020. So let's see uh, what are the main business subdivisions of Cadillac Healthcare Limited. Uh, in Indian market, they have Indian human health formulations for those who doesn't know formulation formulations are final drug consumed by any individual it contains active ingredients and uh, other ingredients together it's made as a capsule in order to consume so uh, it had Indian Indian geography human health formulation business it has US and other regulated market uh, regulated market formulation business then they have biological uh, biologics business which uh, which also includes uh, biosimilars then there is vaccine business then there is uh, cidus business uh, sorry wellness business which is also called as cidus wellness uh, which is a, a limit uh, listed company itself then there is animal health business uh, there is also business coming from emerging markets other than India and uh, regulated markets of uh, US and uh, other uh, regulated markets like Europe and so on. Then there is APA business. Then there is final and uh, one of the major important uh, unit which is the new chemical entity for research. This is fundamentally a research center of Cadilla for developing new drug. So let's see the Indian market uh, human uh, health formulation. So it had two kinds of operations uh, in which uh, in, in, in Indian market they operate. There would be mass formulations which are uh, the margins are very less and uh, uh, it is distributed in mass quantity so it's like uh, sometimes like uh, you know fever drug something like that so these uh, in this mass ma formulations they adopt market penetration approach to capture more and more market then there is specialty formulation specialty formulations are uh, something uh, something special or uh, like uh, it is for a special disease and it is not manufactured in high, higher quantities so for example for uh, cardiac diseases or uh, uh, CNS that is uh, uh, nervous system those kind of diseases so in India this is the fourth largest pharma company with a 4.2 market share under 100 percentage subsidiary called Cydus Healthcare Limited. So Cydus Healthcare Limited manages all it, all the Indian operations. Uh, there are nine brands having more than uh, 100 crores uh, sales turnover, and there are 12 brands which comes around uh, top 300 pharmaceutical brands in India. 
it had posted sales of uh, three, uh, 37,141 million rupees which is up 6% from past year and this is the second largest contributor for revenue after US formulation business at 27% of total revenue. If you see uh, what are the uh, the main products, uh, what are the areas in which uh, Cytus Healthcare uh, operates and uh, uh, what is its market position. So in gynecology they are the market leader, respiratory they are the second, dermatology they are the market leader, in pain management they are the market leader. Uh, and in uh, gastrointestinal they are at third position cardiac they are at fourth position and there are other other uh, systems as well they cover let's see the u.s formulation business u.s formulation uh, the important about uh, u.s formulation business is that uh, it contributes about about 45 percentage of total revenue of cadillac Right now, the company claims that it is the fourth largest uh, generic companies uh, in US based upon prescription, a gain of uh, three position with a market share of 4.1 percentage. Uh, I can get the uh, data from their uh, annual reports, but I'm not 100 percent sure about this fact. Uh, but they they uh, started with some marketing research organization data. Then. They have filed uh, around 30 additional ANDS with the US, uh, US FDA during this year, taking the cumulative number filing to 390. If you see uh, the cumul cumulative ANDA approval uh, of Cadilla is at 282. For those who doesn't know what is ANDA, this is the drug file uh, submission towards US FDA for approval of generic drugs not the new drug discovery in US. So US FDA has to approve it in order to launch the drug in US. And they are launching 30 new products this year. Uh, the new launches in, include uh, reverse tick mine transdermal patch, which is the first transdermal patch released from companies on pipeline. Company has successfully completed six US uh, FDA inspection at different manufacturing site during the year without any observation. However, the US FDA given a warning letter to Mori Moraria uh, formulation facility in the month of November 2019. Uh, the company has uh, taken the uh, corrective measures and it has given fifth update to US FDA with respect to uh, corrective and prevent, uh, prevention actions. And uh, if you see the specialty business, uh, they, they are, uh, in US also they are into specialty and mass formulation business as well. In specialty business that saw a decline due to competitor entry in liverophenol which is a, a high, key high margin product. So if there is a competitor coming in specialty business, it affects the business of uh, Cadilla. So the company is actually giving more focus on specialty drugs in US market, which is stress uh, with a stress on uh, pain management, specialty neurology, dermatology, gastro and liver also specialty oncology they have posted sale of 62,540 million rupees uh, in last uh, financial year they are planning to file 40 NDA and one NDA NDA is basically new drug discovery uh, per year uh, for the next three years so 40 NDA per year and one NDA per year they they also spend around seven to eight percentage of revenue in r and which is high for any pharmaceutical company uh, they they are quite uh, innovative companies let's see the emerging markets business of cadillac healthcare the asia pacific and africa region uh, had double digit growth uh, in business 
because of exp volume expansion of uh, pillar brands. Some of the countries, uh, the sales were impacted because uh, there was a surge in uh, uh, generic drugs competition. The company has filed 21 uh, new product dossiers from new manufacturing site at Myanmar for Asia Pacific region. Even though there is a deteriorating economical and uh, currency devaluation at Brazil, the, uh, the company has actually registered growth of 8% in Brazil market, even though the pharmaceutical, whole overall ma pharmaceutical market grew only 6%. In Ma Mexico, company registered r robust growth because of their focused approach on uh, CNS segment, which is uh, neurology sector. Then there is emerging markets of Asia Pacific, Africa, Middle East, all the uh, sales in emerging markets had uh, done business up of 5% uh, from the past year. They had a sales of 8,753 million rupees. Let's see the biologics and biosimilars. For those who are, doesn't know biologics and biosimilars, the drugs are smaller molecules which can easily penetrate into cell and act on the cell. But biologics are uh, somewhat more complex uh, in character and uh, these cannot be uh, uh, taken easily uh, through intraoral. This should be actually injected. So the example of biologics is uh, the insulin, what you take through the uh, venous system. So, in biologics and biosimilars, they have a portfolio of 6 novel biologics and 21 uh, biosimilars. The portfolio th uh, actually covers in areas like oncology, autoimmune disease, nephrology, opth uh, ophthalmology, inflammation, rheumatology, hematology and infectious diseases. The company has uh, launched uh, twin rab timin in the month of June uh, 2020. Uh, which is uh, a monoclonal antibodies against rabies virus. You know, it's uh, against rabies, which is uh, dog bite. You know it. So, the biologic drugs also include the main, uh, like, exceptia injections, Cyflex muscle relax capsule, exodon injections, and there are many kind of other products uh, related for uh, cancers and for nephrotic syndrome. Let's see the APA business. APA, APA for those who doesn't know APA, uh, those one uh, are active pharmaceutical ingredients. These pharmaceutical ingredients are uh, very important for treating uh, treating the diseases. They are in small num uh, small quantity. These are actually uh, mixed with other uh, other in uh, domain uh, ingredient in order to make formulations. So in AP business, they had added 41 new customers across different countries during the year. They have filed uh, seven DMO uh, with the US, uh, US FDA. A DMO is the same like. Uh, FDA filing for uh, drug uh, drug approval, taking the cumulative DM of 2150. They have posted a sales of uh, 4530 million rupees, which is up 7% from the past year sales. In vaccine, company has been in forefront of uh, discovery of uh, key vaccines like uh, uh, va Vaxi flu is which was India's first vaccine for prevention of uh, H1N1. Uh, they, had, uh, they had multiple vaccine portfolio with them like rabies, hepatitis B, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, influenza and typhoid fever, 12 plus vaccine portfolios with them. The Vaccine Technology Center at Ahmedabad is the key research center for developing vaccines. Also, the uh, one of the important development is they have developed Psychovid D, which is a DNA virus for treating COVID, uh, COVID-19, and they are awaiting DGCI node to release in India and abroad. 
then there is consumer wellness business this is important for the uh, firm because it uh, currently derives around 12 percentage of revenue for kerala healthcare previously they had main uh, brand uh, which was uh, sugar sugar free you might be knowing uh, in substitute of sugar you would be putting sugar free into your uh, tea and so on so this business actually grown very quickly from 152 crores in uh, financial year 08 to 452 crores in financial year uh, 13 so from there uh, the growth has slowed down and it has uh, reached a uh, saturation level at 490 crores in financial year 18 so Cydus, because of this uh, slowdown in growth of uh, the, the consumer wellness product, they had acquired four products from Haynes, that is Glucon D, Comblan, Nysil and Samrithi Ghee in 2018 for a, a cost of 4,595 crores. And it was very successful for the firm because it had boosted the sales to uh, 1738 crores in financial year 2020 and it right now it contributes around 12 percentage of revenue the market if you see the uh, the market share of other products the glucon d is the market leader with 59 percentage nicel is a heat powder you know uh, you put on uh, he, uh, agonist uh, in heat so it has a market share of 34 percentage and ever youth which is a peel of mask you might be knowing it this is also market leader uh, with 77.9 uh, percentage market share which which is a high market share actually then there is animal health business if you see the animal health has been uh, divided into two one is for us and uh, regulated markets and uh, one is for primarily India and the rest of the world except uh, regulated markets. H-E-M-G-M for regulated market. H-E-S-T-M for India and the uh, rest of the market. It is the second largest animal health business in India and contributes around 4% of revenue. And they are into all kinds of uh, animal health like even for poultry, uh, uh, the vaccines, everything. So the uh, sales has grown in 1300 uh, sorry 139 crores in financial year uh, 2011 to 550 uh, 515 crores in financial year 2020 so it contributes only four percentage of revenue so cadilla has announced that uh, they are selling the animal health uh, uh, business to uh, to multiple alternate asset management like consortium which is a PE consortium for a consideration of 2,921 crores which is uh, which is a whooping amount uh, uh, for uh, for the business on cash free and debt debt free basis then there is uh, new chemical entity research uh, this is this is a new drug discovery center for cadilla you know uh, to to uh, to discover new drug they had to do preclinical and clinical studies uh, so it this is this is a uh, one of the major area uh, company like uh, cadilla is in uh, not a lot of uh, Indian pharmaceuticals are concentrating on uh, in new drug discovery, but Cadilla and uh, bigger pharmaceutical companies like uh, Sun Pharmaceutical are uh, active on this uh, area. So their main research include cardio metabolic disease disorders, inflammation, pain, oncology, and infectious diseases and uh, this research center has eight uh, state-of-art research facilities with over uh, 1400 researchers involved in CIDAS research center uh, and company investing around seven to eight percentage on innovation and uh, the good thing is Sargo Glitsa became uh, world's first drug to be approved uh, by DGCA for treatment of non-alcoholic 
Steto hepatitis and US FDA also granted fast track designation to uh, treat the same for uh, biliary cholangitis. This is also uh, approved by DGCA in treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus as an add-on uh, therapy with metamorphin. Metamorphin is a drug for diabetes. So it's an it like uh, so it's very uh, um, it's a key discovery for uh, Cadilla Healthcare and uh, once it is approved fully approved and uh, it's marketed it will create a huge amount of uh, cash uh, uh, cash for uh, a business for Cadilla Healthcare. So they have successfully completed uh, for evidence for the phase second clinical trials in US. And for another uh, drug, this deceduced stat, uh, they had started phase three clinical trials in India and uh, an in an investigational uh, which is a new drug which is a new drug uh, aimed at treating anemia in dialysis and uh, not di uh, non dialysis dependent ckd patients which is kidney patients basically so in treating uh, anemia this uh, deciduous stat has been uh, undergoing phase three clinical trials then we we can look at uh, their joint ventures and subsidiaries they had two joint ventures one is with uh, Takeda, Takeda which is a Japanese uh, pharmaceutical company and uh, uh, Hospira which is also a foreign pharmaceutical company so uh, with these two of the companies they have a uh, they have joint venture and they have successfully created a manufacturing for, uh, f uh, plan for uh, manufacturing the drugs. So both of the manufacturing sites has uh, completed inspections from uh, regulatory bodies like FD, US FDA, SFDA and other regulatory bodies. If you see the subsidiaries, they have more than 40 subsidiaries worldwide including India. India. So in every aspect they have every many of the major countries they have subsidiaries. Let's see some uh, interesting facts about the industry. So India accounts about 20% uh, of global exports of generic drugs. So Indian drug companies are ma uh, mostly focused on generic drugs. But key companies, uh, some of the major companies like Cadilla, Sun Pharmaceuticals also focus on new drug discovery, uh, which which is risky. But when it uh, when it uh, actually they if they are successful, the uh, the potential for growth is very huge. And uh, if you see Indian bulk industry also, which was perceived as a industry manufacturing simple AP molecules, it has uh, it has grown over years for a preferred destination for high value and complex APIs. So, uh, if you take industry, North America is the still biggest pharma market with 45 percentage of total global sales. India ranks third in advantages of availability of uh, uh, chemists, technologies, world-class facility and low-cost operations. Let's see the shareholding pattern of uh, uh, Cadilla Healthcare. Uh, so in Cadilla Healthcare, the promoters has uh, the shareholding of around 70 Seventy-four point seven nine percentage in two thousand eighteen, and they has um, they have uh, increased their stake slightly to seventy-four point eight eight in March two thousand twenty-one. So, Cydus Family Trust has around uh, seventy-four point seven eight percentage uh, stake in the company. And if you see, FIAs actually reduced their stake in the company from 8.73% to 5.23%, which is not good. 
DAAs, on the other hand, has actually increased their stake from 8.56 percentage to 11, uh, 12.59 percentage, but they have still reduced to 11.30 percentage. And public shareholding has slightly gone up to 8.4 percentage from 7.84 percentage. Let's see the financial evaluation of Cadillac Healthcare. So this is a single snapshot about a financial evaluation of Cadillac Healthcare. It has a market capitalization of 63,267 crores, which is a large cap uh, pharmaceutical. I said that uh, Cadillac Healthcare is one of the uh, biggest pharmaceutical companies in India. They are one among uh, pharma big pharmaceutical companies like Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy's and uh, uh, even Devis. So, the current price stands at 618 rupees. When you consider the book value at, oh, at uh, 127 rupees. So, the book value is around uh, 4.87, which actually represents that the stock uh, price is actually uh, <clears throat> expensive. Uh, but because uh, the Cadillac is uh, is a well diversified with established brands, I still perceive that uh, uh, this value is actually driven by the fundamentals. And uh, if you see the high and low within one year, it has uh, given a high of 674 rupees and it has gone as low as 347 rupees. It has a stock PE of 27.66 when you compare with the industry PE at 28.5, which is very reasonable. And uh, but if you, uh, dividend yield is very less, and if you see ROCE, ROE, uh, it's not that impressive. R see the ROCE at 15.1 percentage, ROE at 19.6 uh, percentage. Which is uh, ROE is at, uh, it's better than ROCE because uh, Cadillac Healthcare actually has depth of around uh, near to 4000 but currently stands at uh, 3680 crores. So, but I think when the, uh, the animal healthcare business is already sales completed and once they recoup the money, the, the depth position would be only 1000 crores. That means that ROC will be improving. So face value at 1. There is no stock split in the future. And sales of 15,102 crores. Which is so high uh, for any pharmaceutical company. With an operating margin of 22.1. Uh, which is also uh, impressive. Uh, profit after tax of 2,293 crores. Sales quarter uh, in recent quarter 3847 crores with a pat of 730 crores impressive sales growth in three years only 8.25 percentage and profit growth is only at 9.5 percentage uh, which is not that impressive but uh, given uh, the size of the company and uh, uh, given the uh, all kind of uh, diversified uh, it's it works like a conglomerate so the, we, we can't expect too much of growth in sales and uh, return on assets is at 9.92 which is which is also kind of decent for a, a company which is uh, which is a kind of a big company like Cadillac Healthcare Let's see financial return in detail. If you take the the revenue and profits, see the profits have uh, more than uh, triple from financial year uh, 2010 to 2021. That too, it had in uh, in 95 they had a sales turnover of only two, only 250 crores. See from uh, I haven't included 95 but from 250 crores in uh, in 95 to financial year 21 it had grown to enormous size of 
15,102 crores with a profit of 2,134 crores. Very impressive, very impressive. And let's see the key, uh, CAGR sales and profit. So in 10, in 10 years, they had a sales growth of 13th percentage which is the most impressive but in five years they had sales of uh, sales growth of 10 percentage which means that company is experiencing some competition uh, in other markets the profit growth but if you see the compound profit growth uh, in the last uh, tra uh, trailing 12 month period they had a profit growth of 60 percentage that is the main reason why the stock price has appreciated so much in the recent uh, months. Let's see the EBITDA margins. See the EBITDA margins. Always it has been high. There are only few pharmaceutical companies which has uh, EBITDA margins coming near to uh, more than going 30, 30 percentage. So still it has uh, near to 30 percentage of uh, EBITDA margins which is impressive only uh, few pharmaceutical like uh, Divis Pharma and uh, uh, Torrent Pharma has more EBITDA margins than mm, than Cadillac. Let's see the ROC. ROC over the years from uh, 2011 to 2017 there was an impressive uh, growth in uh, ROC it has grown to 36.14 but from 2017 the, there was a huge dip in 2017 from there it has been marginally growing but ROC is uh, what I think is still impressive and uh, I think when they uh, when they have uh, they have sold animal health and they had the money from the animal health uh, that will actually help them reduce a lot of debt so the ROC will uh, improve enormously and uh, ROE also was very impressive see still it is it is in okay condi uh, condition uh, when you compare with the size of the company see the ROE uh, sorry ROE ROE uh, it was actually impressive ROE over the years but I don't know from 2017 onwards ROA has been down uh, there might be several reasons like uh, depreci uh, I mean <clears throat> some some drugs I mean the sales might be going on very well and there would there would be some uh, uh, lot of competitors in some drugs this might be the reasons so Previously also I have said they have a debt near to 4004 uh, crores and rating given to them by the Crystal is a AA plus table reaffirmed uh, which is one of the highest rating given to any companies and uh, Crystal A1 plus reaffirmed for the short term debt. So like I said previously when the animal health business is uh, sold Cadillac dub will increase to uh, decrease to thousand crews so which is nothing when you compare with the size of the company long-term debt to equity ratio if you see uh, it had the highest uh, long-term debt to equity ratio in the year 2013 at 0 0.27 uh, which was high but over the years company has able to reduce the long-term debt to equity ratio which is uh, which is very good for the company and let's see the interest coverage ratio but interest coverage ratio has been coming down in March 2016 and so on it has interest coverage ratio of 95.48 in March 2020 it has come to the depth of 7.88 uh, which was uh, very bad for the company but uh, in March 2021 they have actually uh, corrected the, the interest coverage ratio uh, they have an interest coverage of ratio of 27.46 which is ideal let's see the business risk of uh, Cadillac Healthcare Ca the main 
uh, for any pharmaceutical companies the regulatory risk is one any pharmaceutical company which also focuses on regulated markets like us or japan so regulatory risk is one of the key risk for them in the business so they had they got a warning letter to um, moria plan which contributes around 35 percentage of us revenue so they are in uh, still in pro, uh, process of correction uh, so they have filed the fi- uh, fifth uh, letter towards usfda uh, hope that it will be corrected in future and there is increasing competition in specialty products in regulated markets like us and there is increasing competition in generic products in emerging markets both are uh, key business risk for the company and new d- drug discovery is the area company is in like a major uh, pharmaceutical company in india so even though uh, if any successful drug discovery is uh, uh, given it will give uh, it will give out uh, enormous profits for the company uh, after the successful launch uh, but still new drug discovery is more riskier than manufacturing generic drugs or developing generic drugs because it incurs more and more capital burn but as far as uh, cadillas uh, story has been uh, told it has successfully developed a drug which uh, which got uh, dgsa node and uh, it's undergoing it's also got some uh, usft approval so i believe that new drug discovery won't be a risk for a business risk for cadillac let's see valuations so over years uh, the book value has gone up from 102 to 221 in financial uh, 2015 and uh, over that uh, the the book value has come down i believe there might be stock splits the, i don't see there is any other uh, reason for it i don't know the exact reason for why the book value has come down yeah, because company has enormously grown in size and if you see the price to uh, book value per share it was uh, 7.8 percentage uh, in financial uh, 2011 6.1 percentage uh, 7.1 uh, and uh, right now it stands around uh, around 4.9 uh, the 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 coming months and uh, if you see in financial year 2020 it was at uh, attractive valuations right now it is still uh, if you compare price to book value it is uh, right now the valuation at uh, 4.9 uh, which means that company uh, the company is getting slightly expensive but when you compare with the uh, price to book value in 2011 2012 and so on it's still cheaper than the previous years so let's see some uh, weakness and strength uh, about uh, uh, cadilla healthcare so uh, it's an expensive star uh there is a consistent high growth return in stocks a rising net cash flow in uh, from operating activity which is very fundamentally very important for any company uh company with highest uh, ttm eps growth which is uh, wonderful and uh, high petro uh, petroski score with high uh, return on equity and eps growth any company having Petroski score high means it's a financially very stable company and grow, growth in net profit quarter of quarter growth in net profit with increasing profit margin year on year increasing profits every quarter for past four quarters uh, that means that current uh, trailing months it has been performing very well it has a strong cash generating ability from cro- uh, core businesses Uh, book value improving in pa- past two years 
zero promoter pledge which is a very important uh, criteria and uh, recent results growth in operating profits with the increase is in operating margin year on year when you see the the weakness uh, we can see that uh, the stock is getting expensive so mutual funds has decreased their share holding in last quarter and roe is declining roe and roa is declining in last two years i have said in previous slides itself let's compare the cadilla healthcare with the major uh, pharmaceutical big giants in india so it should be compared with the big giants and uh, here we all have the big giants so sun pharmaceutical dr reddy sipla arabindo Uh, these are biggest pharmaceutical giants so let's see the p see the p it it has only a p of 28.01 only arabindo pharma has the p of 10.61 uh, so in p friend uh, it is uh, cadilla healthcare is very attractive and uh, in market capitalization as well it is a fourth uh, yeah it's a fourth largest company uh, among them and uh, and if you see net profit it's it has a decent net profit among the major c other other uh, when you compare cipla has only 413 crores in last quarter even though they have more uh, market capitalization than kerala healthcare and uh, better than dr reddy's but lesser than sun pharmaceutical industries which is a market leader and uh, if you see the profit percentage uh, it's 69.32 percentage which is very high and uh, look at the roc 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 when you look at the roc only arvind pharma is better uh, Arvindo Pharma and Cipla is better than uh, um, Cadilla Healthcare. Let's see the price chart. Uh, if you see 2000, it was available at 7.98, the peanut uh, um, peanut valuations. So from there, it has it has grown enormously high in uh, near to 600 rupees in 2018. from there 2000 uh, during covid pandemic during uh, february and so on it has touched it lows at uh, near to 300 rupees and right now it is near to its uh, 52 week high that is at uh, 625.20 rupees yes, it's uh, 52 week high is at uh, 670 rupees so currently the company has been performing very well but uh, it's still at the expensive valuations so let me give you my insights uh, the current market price of the cadilla healthcare is at 625 rupees it has a fair pe value at 27.6 uh, when you compare with the industry pe at 28.5 so when you compare with the industry pe still the company is attractive but it has a fair overvalued book value but we can't actually say this book value is overvalued uh, because uh, the major pharmaceutical companies like uh, other companies also have the high book value, uh, price to book value so i still believe that uh, stock is still fairly valued uh, but it is an expensive star i could say like this uh, in a nutshell i can say these facts it's a well diversified company with established brands it has a good management high ebitda margin presence in all ge- geography and even it has a consumer care business as well which is always like acts like an uh, insurance against uh, Uh, anything goes like uh, goes in pharmaceutical industry they also have a consumer uh, wellness business as well so 
I would suggest that uh, investors can still buy the share even though valuations are very expensive. Uh, valuations are expensive. Uh, can we say like very expensive? Uh, only main regula uh, main risk is the regulatory risk in U.S. and increasing competition in spe specialty segment. So, guys, uh, final as a disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a uh, approved licensed portfolio manager. Uh, all the information that I uh, collect from it, I give the courtesy for uh, uh, respective companies and uh, make uh, your own decision while you are doing investment. Also give me some feedbacks about the videos that I make. I would be interested in having a uh, any kinds of feedbacks that you provide me with.